deciding not to exercise is not just a minor oversight, if you ask me. It's a decision that will have severe consequences, especially as we age. And the time is now. It's time now to take action and prioritize our health and commit to regular exercise. And I love to share stories with you. And this one is from a client that's just recently wanted to work with me. He has a lot of health issues, but he wanted to gain muscles. He said, I've been on this diet because I have heart disease. And this is something we'll talk about on this episode as well is, but I've lost all this muscle mass because I was on this really restrictive diet to get the weight down and the numbers are good, but now I have no muscles. What should I do? So I asked him what he actually does. And it turns out he doesn't really like to exercise that much. Even with all the health issues he has, he still was sort of on the fence if he should exercise. So he told me about his exercise regime. And I was just shaking my head and I'm like, nope, we need to change things around for you. We're not doing 30 repetitions of something that makes no sense, that has no place in how you order the exercise, how you get things together so they make sense working from the big muscle groups to the small muscle groups and talking about how many repetitions that he need to do for muscle growth and how often he should exercise. And he said, well, quite frankly, I'm working out once a week and that's what I do. So just yesterday, he reported back and he said, listen, uh, I was working on what you did. I upped my weights and I am doing the exercises once a week but I'm not seeing any muscle growth. What, what am I supposed to do? And I, should I come in and see you? And I told him or I emailed him, I said, listen, you can come and see me if that holds you accountable for exercising, but you can just go to your gym in your building and start doing the exercises we've talked about two to three times a week because they don't take more than 15 minutes and you can do it. But he's lagging the desire and the consistency to do more, to live better, to get stronger and healthier. And despite all his medical issues, the bell has not rung. And this is what this episode is about. I want you to ring your own bell saying, all right, I need to do something now. It doesn't matter how old I am. I can start at any age, at any condition I'm in never exercised before, physical conditions. We can all do something because growing older doesn't mean we need to spend more on health care, which is what happens. We have to go to the doctor a lot more. We get more prescription, but regular exercise isn't just good for your body and your mood. It can also help you save money on health care costs. By staying active, you can stay healthier and avoid pricey medical bills. So listen to this. According to a study by the Milken Institute, an estimated 1.1 trillion was lost due to lost productivity associated with chronic disease in 2016. The same survey states that modest reductions in unhealthy behavior could prevent or delay 40 million cases of chronic illnesses per year. Therefore, promoting healthier habits and preventative care could result in significant cost savings in health care. So your health is your wealth. You can save a lot of money by exercising and eating healthy. And we're focusing primarily on exercise today. And just recently, I went to the nephrologist. And if you don't know what that is, I had to Google it too. It's the kidney doctor. I used to have kidney stones and nobody has looked at my kidneys for 40 years. So I thought it was time to that somebody would check out my kidneys and see how they function because I had some pretty big stones. And the first thing they asked me, uh, or told me to do is bring a list of your medications. So as 
as thorough as I always am, I started taking pictures of the vitamins I'm taking and I take thyroid medication because I don't have a thyroid anymore. It was removed. So I need to um, work with my thyroid function with my medication. That's the only medication I take. But I took all the things that I take throughout the day, my protein powder. I took pictures because, you know, a list of medications. And they said, no, 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 no. We just want what's prescribed. That's all you have? And I'm like, yeah. So they were quite disappointed that at age 62, I don't have more meds that I'm on. And this is a good point to think about. Some of our medications are necessary, and we need to take them, like my thyroid, uh, or perhaps even blood pressure medication. If what we're talking about is not working, which is exercise and a healthy lifestyle. So let's talk about the positive effects on exercise, on age-related diseases. We're getting older, we, we, whether we like it or not. There are several age-related diseases that can be prevented or at least reduce the, the, the pain, the functionality, or whatever is associated with this disease can be reduced through regular exercise, especially for people over 50. But as I said, it's never too late to start. Well, number one would be cardiovascular diseases like heart disease and stroke. Exercise or aerobic exercise helps control blood pressure and cholesterol levels, which reduces the risk of heart disease and stroke. You need to know heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States and can affect women at any age. Then we have type 2 diabetes. I'm sure you heard about this. So regular exercise can help uh, regulate blood sugar levels and enhance insulin sensitivity. The body's cells don't respond normally to insulin, and that's why you become insulin insensitive. Reduce the risk of heart disease, uh, we talked about, and then reducing the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So we're, we're putting these together. A lot of them are so close really related, but you need to know about it so you can make yourself a clear picture about what, what we're talking about today. Reduced immune, fun immune function. Regular moderate intensity exercise can contribute to a strong immune system, and we, be, we are way more effective in fighting off infection and diseases. Now, I am highlighting the moderate intensity. High intensity can increase or is increase in inflammation in the body. So know your body, know what you can or cannot do. If you have arthritic knees, high impact or high intensity may not be for you. So think about that. But at moderate intensity increases your immune function, fighting disease. What's not to like about that? And then we have certain cancers. Exercise is linked to lowering the cancer, including breast and colon cancer. Then we, talk, of course, talk about osteoarthritis and arthritis. Uh, sorry, osteoporosis and arthritis. Weight-bearing, low-impact exercises like walking or weightlifting can help maintain bone density, reduce the risk of osteoporosis and fractures. Fractures very common when we fall as women age because our bone density is low. Exercise can manage arthritis symptoms or reduce the risk of developing osteoarthritis. So strong bones, bone up your bones by doing strength training. Obesity, a healthy diet and maintaining a healthy weight helps reduce the risk of obesity and related complications. So when you think of being very overweight, you're looking into uh, more osteoarthritis, you're looking more into type 2 diabetes. So again, it ties all together. And then we have decreased cognitive function. Also, cognitive function means you contributes, exercise contributes to a good brain health, health and helps prevent the decline when you think of for being forgetful or the mental fog that we have. But Lack of exercise could contribute to a greater risk of, of cognitive impairment, including dementia. Now, you may know that I love dancing tango. And tango 
someone, and I don't know who that was, and that's not hearsay because I read it, is that tango is used to help improve cognitive function because you have to move your legs, plus you have to think about the moves you're doing. So tango dancing has proven to improve cognitive function. Think Alzheimer's. This study was based on people with Alzheimer's, how they improved their fun cognitive function by dancing tango. Could be anything else, but it was a study that I came across. And then finally, depression and anxiety. Again, regular exercise has shown to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety, and it releases the endorphins, which are a natural mood booster. It's like the happy hormone. You, you exercise and you feel good, like I said in the beginning of this episode. And as always, I share some really good resources of that I have guest podcasts. I had a podcast that I did myself. And I want you to check out how to stay active with osteoarthritis with Alyssa Kuhn. And a link will be in the show notes where we really talk about what to do and how to do things. And, and Alyssa is a physical therapist and osteoarthritis specialist. And it ties in perfectly with our episode. The link is in the show notes for you to check it out. So, Rising health care costs. Our drugs cost mere more. We have more co-pays as we go to the doctors. We pay just in general more for hospital stays and things like that. But what drives this increase? Now, staying healthier longer depends on various factors like age, genetics, lifestyle, type of health care coverage that we have geographical location, and much more. However, it is widely accepted that leading a healthy lifestyle can substantially save health costs. And how do Americans spend their hard-earned dollars on health care? Well, a lot of money we spend on health care goes to treating long-lasting illnesses like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. These costs include expensive hospital stays, surgeries, and the visits to the emergency room. If people are healthier, they may not need to buy as many prescriptions either, which can often be super costly, especially the ones from well-known brands like my thyroid medication, which I need to take so I can't get rid of it. Uh, But maybe other medications that you take can be reduced or you don't need them once you start exercising. Also, Healthier people tend to take fewer sick days from work, meaning you can be more productive and financially stable. How many sick days, if you are working, do you have? In general, five. If you take more, you don't get paid. Plus, if people keep themselves healthier for a long time, they may not need expensive care services at home or in nursing homes as early. The longer... The longer you stay healthy and fit, the less you need these services. Services. Um, This all means that being healthier can help you save a lot of money. Here's another study I came across. According to a new study of of exercising regularly, Medicare claims, that's what they say, I found this on the interweb, that people who start to exercise before or during middle age typically save anywhere from $824 to $1,874 annually on health care costs after retirement. And the earlier they start their workouts, the greater those savings can be. That's what Medicare says. I would like you to also to check out my episode titled How to Stay Fit, Strong, and Healthy in Midlife. It's a very comprehensive post that you can read or listen to where we talk about Pilates, strength training, walking, um, supplements, should we take them or should we not take them, and what we need to eat to improve our diet in midlife and help with a healthy aging process. Now, here are the top five reasons exercising regularly will benefit your finances. Exercise is considered a form of preventative care because it helps maintain overall health. 
and reduces the risk of developing lifestyle or age-related diseases and health conditions. If you forgot what they were, just go back on the, on the podcast a little bit further, and I talked about all of them, and they are real, ladies. They are a real thing. So even small changes in your daily life can help you live longer and better. A study of adults 40 and older found that taking 8,000 steps or more daily compared to only 4,000 steps was associated with 51% lower risk of death from all causes like heart disease, stroke, cancer. And that's 4,000 steps can be hard to add. I know sometimes we sit all day and then if we track our steps, we did 2,000 steps a day. So let's talk about those top five reasons exercising regularly will benefit your finances. So the, here are, or here is number one, lowering healthcare cost. Regular exercise like brisk walking, swimming, biking, dancing, or yard work strengthens the heart and cardiovascular system, improves blood circulation, and reduces the risk of heart disease. It also can lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. So even gardening is good for you, but taking action with these things is one of the first steps to take. Number two, it improves mental health. Again, regular, and you will hear that word like a that bazillion times, regular exercise has also shown to reduce symptoms in people suffering from depression and anxiety and provide an overall mood boost. Think of the happy hormones again. This again can save you money on health treatments and medication. How often, if you still watch what I call regular TV, where they show you the ads, then you know what I'm talking about. You hear that after the whatever part of the show you're watching, suddenly there's an antidepressant medication being marketed to us, followed by another uh, medication that helps with heart disease and so on. It's just horrible how we're marketed those those drugs does as only solution. They position themselves as that's the only thing that will work, but not so fast. When you exercise, your body releases endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin. These are called the feel-good hormones because they lower your worries, stress, and sadness, and you just feel good afterwards. Besides doing as exercise, especially when you do them in a group, gives you a chance to meet and interact with new people, which can make your social life better and maybe even help you make new friends. You know that I used to be part of the Montgomery County Roadrunners running group here in Montgomery County where I live, and I can't participate anymore because I have a bum knee, which you don't want to know about, but it ties in with aging. So I walk now, which is great too. But what I miss the most is meeting my buddies. Summertime, 6 a.m., we would meet in a place called Bethesda, and there were like 50, 60 of us, and we would get together. First we chat, then we start running, and we do some more chatting. So by the end of the run, you have solved all your problems. You have talked about everything that bothers you or makes you happy and learned from all your friends what's going on in their lives. And then you perhaps made plans to meet up on the weekend for a dinner, for a brunch, or for another walk. Or when you find out what things you share, like you may share a love for classical music that you say, come on, let's go to the Kennedy Center here in Washington, D.C. and listen to an opera or the National Symphony. So this is also a great way through exercise to meet new people if you are single, divorced, whatever, but you just just don't have a partner, then exercise is a great way to meet people. Walking, swimming, boating, uh, kayaking, whatever it is, it's a great way to make new friends and feel happier. I love this. I, I just love this aspect of it. Exercising regularly also helps you sleep 
better. And that saves money on sleep aid or energy drinks if you need a pick-me-up. Because you sleep better and you're lowering stress and improve brain functions like remembering things and paying attention. So when you're sleepy, you don't pay attention. When you're tired, you don't pay attention. When you need your caffeine boost, you are maybe all jittery. So think of the things that exercise can do for you. And number three is lowering insurance premiums. And I did not know that until my husband had a nurse come to um, to sign him up for his life insurance. People who exercise regularly and maintain a healthy lifestyle often qualify for a lower health and life insurance pre- insurance premiums because insurance companies see them see them as a lower risk client. So that's what this woman did. This nurse came to our house. She took blood pressure and took blood and whatever else she was doing, checking his fitness and vitals. And he got a really good rate because my husband's really fit. It's like he's, he's going to be 60 next year. So, but he's keeping up. He's a triathlete. So, but the nurse came and made sure that he was a good candidate. And think about it. The differences in the premiums can be significant. And number four is preventing prevention of future medical expenses. Regular exercise needs to focus on a cross-training apo- approach that includes balance, bone strengthening, resistance training, and flexibility that are all tying together, maintaining bone density, joint flexibility, you're reducing the risk of injuries, increasing, uh, I'm sorry, increasing your health in the future and reducing illness for the future, lowering the chance of injuries and sickness in the future and saving money. Here it is again on medical bills. As we age, our balance declines. And you may already feel that standing on one leg is not so good anymore, which increases the risk of falls, which then increases the risk of fractures, especially hip fractures for women. So it's like this little chain reaction. Uh, Balance exercises are super important for you. How about Tai Chi, certain yoga poses, or specific a uh, balance focused exercise like standing on one leg putting one foot in front of the other and trying to hold this without falling over or even pilates standing exercises where we do the pilates v with our feet and then we lift up and down that requires strength and a lot of balance now things like jumping jacks running weightlifting can help strengthen bones again and maintain bone density reducing the risk of cheer it with me, osteoporosis and fractures. Now, if you can't do jumping checks full on with a jumping out and in, you can always do side steps or instead of running, you can walk. Now, exercises focus on uh, flexibility, stretching exercises, yoga, Pilates. Pilates includes um, stretching on its own because you strengthen in one exercise and you stretch in the next or you strengthen one part of the body while you lengthen the opposite side of the muscle or the, let's say, let's use the arm. If you flex the bicep, the tricep lengthens, for instance. So regular flexibility or or stretching is helping prevent injuries, falls, and maintaining mobility, especially as you age. So think about when I talk about falls and flexibility, Think about when your body is all stiff and you're just walking and you you basically can't turn your head. What impact does that have on when you fall? You will freeze up and you fall over, injuring yourself more than, I know this sounds funny, but I think it's it's a cute way to remember. It's a drop and roll. If you fall, which we all fall, Some of my clients have said, I will never fall. I'm like, yeah, let's just wait. You're going to stumble. You're going to get your toe stuck somewhere. You misjudge the height of a curb. You will fall. But we need to know how to fall. And that's my drop and roll instead of flat plop on your face. Now, strength and resistance exercises help maintain muscle mass, often decreased with aging. 
and that is called sarcopenia. And I talked about sarcopenia before. It's a natural muscle loss that starts at age 30. So we need to strength train. We need to bone up our bones. It also helps keep your bones strong, reducing the risk of fractures. And I mentioned hip fractures just a minute ago. When we fall, we have low bone density. You will or might fracture your hip because of the fall. You can use, for instance, resistance bands, free weights, those dumbbells, weight machines, and any exercises that have body weights such as push-ups or squats where you don't use anything. And Pilates mat work, the Pilates mat work is perfect for that. You don't need anything but your body. And it's quite challenging if you've never done Pilates, but it can, it's doable for anybody. So also, if we are exercising, we're maintaining a healthy weight because exercise helps us burn calories and boosts our metabolism. Exercise combined with a healthy diet, regular exercise is an effective strategy for weight loss and the prevention of obesity. So it all ties in together. When you think about it, one thing leads to another. And number five is reducing dependency on bad habits. Regular exercise can help addictions like smoking or excessive alcohol consumption, leading to significant savings as these habits and the cost of it are very high. The Department of Health and Human Services recommends at least 150 of moderate intensity aerobic exercise for at least 150 minutes per week and vigorous intensity activity for 75 minutes per week. So that's about 20 minutes a day. And I'm, I'm in really in favor of a 15-minute workout. Many of my programs, the Empty Nester Reboot included, we shoot for 15 minutes because when you have 15 minutes, you get it done most days. So what could that look like? You could do 20 minutes of Pilates on Monday. Then you have a brisk walk on Tuesday, 20 minutes, maybe longer if you like. If you're a runner, you may want to run or swim. So do a cardio exercise. Then on Wednesday, you may pick out your resistance band and do some resistance bands. Then the next day you do some cardio again. You may be biking. I love biking. So you may bike for 20 minutes or even more because it's so much fun. And then again, you go maybe on the last day, you focus on a yoga class or you do stretching specific exercises. Again, I always say Pilates includes everything. Do another Pilates session because it's just, it's just rocks. Pilates just rocks. So check out also the five ways women over 50 can improve, can improve their heart health. And this is a post I did, an episode I did in February, which is Heart Health Months. And you can find a lot of fun things to, to do, what to do, what not to do. Um, and how to improve your heart health, which we know by now it's super important. So I leave a link in the show notes for that as well. But you say, Heike, this is all nice and dandy, but how do I get started exercising regularly? Here's that word again, which has to do with consistency. Remember, there's always a time to start. You're never too late, you're never too old, you're never too stiff, you're never too beginner or too advanced to start exercising. No matter what your age is or your current fitness level, you can start doing 15-minute workouts into every day. The 15 minutes invested in your health can lead to future decreases in medical expenses and, and improve overall well-being. Who doesn't want to feel good? If you don't know what to do, start with something that you enjoy. It makes it so much easier to stick to that instead of thinking, oh, my friend's doing, maybe let's say yoga. My friend's doing yoga, but I really don't like that yoga thing. Don't do it because you won't stick with it. You won't do it regularly. You won't be consistent. But if you check out weightlifting, for instance, you say, oh, man, this would be cool. I always wanted to work with those shiny dumbbells, then go for it and see if it's for you. If that's something that fits your lifestyle, 
if you have to drive an hour to go to an exercise class, the novelty will wear off pretty quickly, as good as this class may be, but it will not be worth the drive and it doesn't fit your lifestyle. And find something that interests you. Anything is better than nothing. Start slow and with small steps. You will know my baby steps. I'm a huge fan of, of baby steps. So if you're fif- if these 15 minutes look daunting and you go, Heike, 15 minutes? Are you crazy? Start with two minutes. Get to three minutes. Add on just a little bit every time you go or stay with your first five minutes until you feel confident that this is feels good, it's not too hard, that you can do it. And then you add just a little bit more. And you say, or some of my clients have said, but is that really enough? Yes, because as you start to increase the time and the intensity you're exercising, you get more confident, you feel better, you want to do more of it, and maybe also to do different things. It's The key is to increase slowly. Over time will also help prevent injuries and make it easier to stick with. So if you said, hi, get this was a great episode. I'm going out and I'm going to go for a run for at least 30 minutes. That's going to be great. And you've never run more than five minutes or you don't run, you just walk. And I didn't, shouldn't say just, you walk because walking is awesome. It wouldn't work. You would hurt you would not feel good and you would be hating everything. And you say, hey, get whatever she's saying. She's crazy nutter. Start slow. Listen to your body. Take time to do a little bit more every day. Now, with that, I also want to share the how to increase mental, mental and physical strength episode that is geared towards that you want to do more but not overdo it, that you love what you do and not hate it. So this has all to do with your mindset and your brain and how they work together. Again, the link is in the show notes. So here are my tips, here are three tips for for staying consistent with exercise. It is super important that you stick with an exercise routine. Not all the new and shiny things are for you. And if you keep hopping around and trying this one day and that one day, and then you do five minutes here and two minutes there and 10 minutes there, you'll never see the result or the benefits of it because you keep hopping around. So boring when it comes to consistency is good. I want you to number one, set clear and achievable goals. Start with a simple goal, like the 15 minute walk. That's your goal. That's your end goal. And then see where you are. Do your first walk and see how far you walk. If that felt good, okay, great. Then it's time maybe to add a little bit more the next day. If it didn't feel so good, you did probably too much. But you want to set a clear goal of how far you want to go, how long you want to do. A clear goal gives you a sense of achievement and motivates you because you can keep tracking it. You could say, okay, today I did three minutes. Tomorrow I do four. Okay. I did four. Yay. I did four minutes because if you don't track it, you don't know. If you say, oh, I'm going for a walk that has no, okay, this is great, but you cannot hold yourself accountable for your goals and how you achieve the goals. And if you're not a goal setter, do your thing. I think it's important to have a goal and a clear goal of what it is that you want to achieve. Number two is create a routine and stick to it. Consistency is critical. Try to schedule your workout at the same time each day. This will help you establish a habit. So exercise becomes a regular part of your daily routine. Do it every day, every other day. And you know, like I've mentioned earlier, 
change it up a little bit and see, which is number three, mix it up. Keep things fun, but stay engaged and stay consistent. Don't stick to one type of exercise, which is so easy to do that you say, oh, I'm just doing Pilates. Mix it up. Keep it interesting. Keep it active. Do something for your heart, for your flexibility, for your strength. And you will activate those muscles and those heart system and your brain function. And you get that adrenaline boost. Besides those happy hormones you get from working out may just help you stick to your healthy habits a little bit more. And the feeling fit is contagious. There's nothing better than feeling strong and able. Like when I mow my lawn, I feel strong and able. There are five simple tips that help you consistent exercise consistently that I will put a link in the show notes for you. So you have more ideas of what you can do if you desire so, and how to make this hap- make those habits stick. So link is in the show notes for you too. If you're fit, you're likely following a balanced, healthy diet. While some may believe healthy foods are more expensive, people who eat balanced and healthy meals often don't eat out or order out as often And this also can save a lot of money. In addition, preparing meals at home usually allows for leftovers, one of my favorite things, which can reduce the cost of future meals. So you're building on your leftovers. And it's basically what we did last night. We had chicken leftover that we grilled, and I just added some broccoli to them for last night's meal. So I made fresh broccoli, I steamed it, a little salt and pepper on it, a little pepper, couple of pepper flakes to give it a little bit of a spice to it. And that was our dinner for last night. So it also helps you save money that way. You want toss food, food savings. So that's awesome. You're saving food. If you're stumped for ideas of what you could do, Check out the recipes ideas um, in my recipe packs. I leave a link in the show notes so you can check out one of them or all of them that may fit what your needs are to get ideas for making healthy meals. Now, in addition, we can make several other lifestyle changes to improve our financial stabilities, such as stop smoking if you still smoke, reduce alcohol consumption eat healthy and nutritious meals, creating a budget, reducing your debt, and invest wisely. So the budget, the debt, and the investment is not my forte, but I can help you with everything else. So why wait? Tie up those shoelaces, unroll the yoga mat, and dust off the stationary bike. Your health and wallet will thank you. Come and join me in the Fearlessly Fit Over 50 Club with over 100 workouts to choose from with minimal equipment and features for knee-friendly exercises. Then look no further. Join our community and embrace the freedom to work out at home while transforming your health and well-being. Exercising regularly will benefit your health and your finances in the long run. So tell me, With what are you going to start today? I can't wait to hear from you.